Um, you know, today's webinar is going to be uh, pretty quick and to the point. I think you're going to get a lot out of it. Um, I'm pretty confident you've never been to an email signature webinar before, and I think there's a lot of value in today's today's topic and, and certainly into some of the tips we're going to offer. Um, so, you know, as I think back, and it's probably been about 10 years now, it must have been back in about 2003, um, my role, I was at the time kind of working with my father. We had a very big company of about 50 employees. And really, I was the head of all of our email marketing. And we were sending out maybe an upwards of 50,000 emails a month to potential insurance brokers uh, to use us as a wholesaler. So um, I, I was kind of always pushing myself to increase the technology we had. And I came across a technology um, that it was a, a third party company that offered a, a really a customized email signature. Now this just wasn't something that you had on the bottom. Basically every email I sent out had, you know, really a beautiful, you know, border. It, it embedded our company logo. I had my picture on it. Um, you know, I, I'm being uh, modest. It, it was really a, a piece of art to be to some extent. Just a beautiful email um, design that would, you know, I was able to basically upload it into our email server um, and get it to you know, every time I sent an email out uh, or started an email, it was part of the email. So anyway, I don't want to hash on that too long, but long story short, um, started to use it and, and was so kind of proud of myself that I was ahead of the curve, per se, um, and was sending out emails really all month and was constantly getting complaints. People saying they weren't getting my emails, people constantly saying that the they couldn't read the emails, that the, the text was kind of jumbled. So at the time I had a Yahoo and a Hotmail address and I kind of sent the, I sent, it, sent the emails to those and was kind of upset to find out that my beautiful email signature template, it really didn't look so great on Yahoo and Hotmail. So I called up um, at the time, and I, I still work with these guys, we had a company that was really our IT team, about five guys, um, still work with them to this day, it's been about 15 years. And the owner of the company, he's probably about five years older than me, and um, real, just a genius when it comes to real technical IT stuff. So I started to talk to him, and I said, hey, look, you know, I'm having problems um, with emails, and, um, you know, I don't know why they're going through. So he immediately came to me and said, look, I noticed you have this email signature, and I'll tell you right off the bat, there's about four things wrong with it. One it's making the size of your emails 15 times the size of a normal email. Two, a lot of these free companies like Yahoo and Gmail and Hotmail, they don't have the technology to be able to read it. So it doesn't work on those. So long story short, I kind of woke up real quick that, hey, maybe all the bells and whistles aren't exactly helping me. Um, so. Back, you know, starting then and really for the last 10 years, I've had a belief in email signatures and I had a really good chat with a guy the other day. So let me kind of go through some tips and strategy here and I think uh, maybe open your guys' eyes to what's going on. Um, so right off the bat, what's an email signature? Well, an email signature is really default text that's going to show up on every email. So if you click the new button and set up a new and send a new email, your, hopefully your name, you know, your phone number, et cetera, is going to be at the bottom every time. The problem now is, is that email is changing so fast. And the way people read emails is different than it was 10 years ago. Probably 60 to 70% of all emails are read on mobile devices. I'm pretty confident that most detailed signatures do not display very nicely on a mobile device. And now the new thing is, is in cars, um, you know, if you're getting text messages, if you're getting emails, you can plug it into your car and your car will verbalize it to you. So there's no way the signature is going to translate there and it could screw that up is my point. Um, so what I'm going to show you is, is some, some signatures that have kind of gotten out of control and try to give you a few tips. Um, so here's an example uh, of a guy who, kind of a client of mine, and uh, so here's his signature, okay? Uh, Here's what he wrote in the email. Thanks, I'll let you know. The rest of it 
and I can't even get it all on one screen, is his email signature. You'll see he's got his name, he's got his logo, he's got his telephone number, his fax number, his 24-hour fax number, he's got his slogan, he's got five websites, his Facebook page, a Twitter icon, a LinkedIn icon, a Facebook like on, uh, an FSP, financial whatever, Society of Financial Services, his NAFA, and then all of his disclosure. That is his email signature. That goes out to every person he sends an email to. So I started to talk to him about it. Real nice guy. And I said, hey, look, your email signature is out of control. And, you know, he, it didn't take much convincing. Um, he said, you know what? It started with one thing. And then I added another thing. And I added another thing. And I added, and next thing you know, you know, it just got, um, you know, it got, uh, it got very large. And, uh, you know, I never thought about it. So I was looking at the size of his emails. And his email that said, I'll let you know, was actually the same size as someone was sending a PDF. It was almost a meg, his email. So I think one of the things um, I always try to tell people is, look, the way, obviously, email hacking and spamming is at an all-time high. So all of these email servers out there, and I'm not going to try to be technical, but they look for what are called red flags, okay? And the most common red flag is an email that's very large. Its size is large. And if your email gets red flagged, usually it doesn't get delivered. It either goes into a spam folder or it gets auto-deleted. So my point is, is back in 2003, I had these problems, and I'm pretty confident right now that that gentleman has these problems too, where maybe only 50% of his emails even arrive at the consumer, you know, at whoever he's trying to send it to, just because of the sheer size of the email. And again, the reason these emails are big is because he's got these graphics in here and, um, you know, all sorts of stuff like that that actually equal pretty big size, especially when that data is being sent across the Internet. So right there, that's something to consider. Um, and then again, is your signature what I call mobile friendly? I think that's pretty important. So just to kind of clarify, here's what I think your email signature should absolutely positively have in there. Your name, your job title, your phone number, your website. Okay? In my opinion, those are the main things you need. Um, what doesn't need to be in there? Probably your fax number, your agency logo, or a large picture of yourself, or some sort of large picture. Pictures are, are dangerous, in my opinion. You know, any excessive descriptive text. I had one guy who had like four paragraphs about the agency. Trust me, if someone wants to learn about your agency, they're not going to read it in the email. They're going to go to your website. I mean, use common sense. Um, some things that are on the, you know, the optional, certainly you can put your social media platform logos in there, maybe one or two of them, the little small ones. Maybe you want to just have a little slogan or mission statement, and certainly your address. Um, but I think if we kind of re review here, this guy's just gone above and beyond. Um, and it, it just becomes so cluttered that no one even reads it. It just looks like a, you know, it's overwhelming. Um, so those are just kind of some concepts. I see a few questions coming in, um, you know, and I'll certainly try to answer them. And one of them is a good question. What about the security disclosure mandated by the broker-dealer? I understand you have to put that in there. Sure, put that in there. Again, that's just basic text. So it's not going to really add size to the thing. Um, it, it's just when you have that plus 37 other things, it becomes a problem. So basic text is really not that, uh, um, is really not that bad. But I, I think when you start to get excessive, you know, it, it, I think my main point, guys, I don't want to overanalyze things, but I think my main point is, is that, you know, the theory is, hey, I'm, I'm sending emails out to everybody. I'm going to use this as a way to market some of my other things I have. And I think that's great, but on the flip side, the way people use emails, rarely are you benefiting from that. Okay, I don't really think too many people are clicking on these things because, one, they don't probably see them because they're looking at your stuff on a mobile device, or two, they're just browsing your email. 
Whereas 10 years ago, people may, be, may have been a little bit more entrenched into email. It fascinated them a little bit more. So I guess my point is, is and my suggestion is, is moving forward, I think it makes a lot more sense to just keep it simple professional. And that actually will equal people being able to look there, maybe going to your website, which is all you really want. You know, if you can drive the people to your site, they're going to end up going to your social media presence. They're going to read about the agency. Um, and I think at the end of the day, it's going to it's going to help it's going to help um, rather than just getting out of control. And and um, so that, that's sorry if I'm rambling, but I think that was my point for today's webinar. And uh, you know, I, I had a great chat with another client the other day, and to me, it's it's just what I call self awareness. You know, sometimes these things sound great. Sometimes you go to a convention or a seminar, and they tell you, look, you got to have that there. You got to do this. You got to do that. A lot of times when you go to those things, these people aren't in the trenches like you are. And well, I guess my suggestion is is anytime you do something like that, test it out. Send an email to yourself. Take a look at it on your iPhone. Take a look at it on Hotmail. Take a look, see how it looks. See how the consumer makes it look. Because the one thing that I learned a long time ago is, is I call it the hundred percent rule. You know, I want my stuff to work a hundred percent of the time. If you send an email out to 100 people and only 72, per, 72 of the 100 read it or are able to read it, that's dumb. That's real dumb. That's a C minus. So that, that's kind of how I always function, and that's what I suggest. So let me just give you two other quick tips. One, I got an iPhone about, I don't know, it was about a year ago. And one thing I learned with the iPhone is I actually had to set up a special signature on the iPhone. So if anyone has an iPhone and you have an email, you have a signature with your normal maybe Outlook, but it's not working when you're sending the emails on your phone, go into your email settings on the iPhone and you'll see an email signature there. You can set it up on your iPhone. If you want to set it up on your email, um, of course my email has frozen, uh, you can go to Tools and click on Options and then click on um, mail format and that's where the signature is okay so again tools options mail format signatures that's how you set it up on your outlook so guys hopefully this was insightful um, you know I don't have any billion dollar idea today but I think again my point is is self-awareness in the end it's going to help you and it's these little little things like this that do make a difference and I think the successful people do them and the people that aren't as successful they're not aware of them so hopefully you're now aware. Guys, I appreciate your time, and I look forward to talking to you next week. Have a great day. Bye-bye.